never danced to that song in a lot years ago. Never could understand what the hell he was saying. <laughs> da, 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 da. And I love the guy. I mean, he's a great singer, but you can't understand anything he said. You know? I tried that technique, but it didn't work. Uh, I will enunciate properly when I say we're at the Memphis Jewish Home and Rehab, and our next guest is Judy Royal. She's executive and uh, resident services committee and a longtime volunteer. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. And how did you come to find uh, the Memphis Jewish Home and Rehab? Well, it was actually, and I knew about it for years, and it was the old B'nai B'rith home on Tucker Street. And probably in about 1985 or 86, I had finished one volunteer activity, and I somebody said to me, how about coming to the B'nai B'rith home and being a volunteer? And at that time, we had a very active group called the Friends, and to be honest, I probably was one of the younger friends um, then, and I started volunteering and just did, you know, all sorts of whatever was needed. Um, and about uh, how old were you when this when you were doing this? Uh, well, let's see. I was about in 1984, 85. I was about 43. And people say now that the only people who volunteer are, are young people now. People have been volunteering forever. Right, right. You just right. didn't get any publicity on it back when you were doing it, right? Well, right. I think you probably didn't get as much publicity. And, of course, now that I think there's so much to be said for volunteering that it really helps people stay younger and active. I absolutely and agree. And I think there's something so so true about that. Because you know what? If you get up in the morning, you look at your calendar, and you have nothing on it, it's pretty depressing, and if you look at your calendar and say, wait, somebody's depending on me, and I think that is as much as anything that when you are volunteering, and I think especially, you know, at that point, the home was, we had no rehab. Everybody was, a, you know, a, a resident. permanent resident, yeah. and many of these people came from small towns, you know, around the area, and so many of them had very little family, and so, so the no volunteers, visitors. right? So the volunteers. One of the things that we did that we had every day of the week is we had people who were friendly visitors, and so these people, you know, they came and volunteered. We had a little sundry store in the basement. We had volunteers who ran that, and people could come and buy little treats. And, um, you know, so it was a socialization. When they transitioned from Tucker Street to this facility, uh, day and night. Right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you saw what the new place looked like, what, is, what was your first reaction? Well, we had been watching it, you know, be, the be built. Um, I think the thing that was the most shocking is probably in the late 80s, because we moved in 1992. So in the late 80s, when there was a, a move underway to move east, and someone came to the board and talked about a piece of property in Cordova, well, we were like, do, we need, do we need to get yeah, a passport to go there? <laughs> so, um, you know, it was suggested, the people who had found this piece of property, it was suggested that everyone who was a member of the board and a lot of the volunteers, and actually I served on the board then, come out here to look at the property. And, you know, it was a long way out, and it was a lot of soul searching um, to make sure that this was the right move. It was a fabulous piece of property, and we had been assured that this is where, you know, people were moving to. So we, I think, really did a leap of faith and said, you know, let's go. And so I think it was a lot of excitement and, um, you know, about what this home was going to be. And um, people were very involved. We had, I remember, about halfway through, we had a tour, you know, when we actually carpooled people to get them out here. And um, it was very exciting. And I think a few weeks ago, I'm sure you've probably heard about the hard hat tour that mm -hmm. we had for the new rehab. You know, in some ways, it was very similar because it was new and it was exciting. And we were all so thrilled about what we had to offer for people well, and you know, two people. Building something and starting off, there is that excitement. The real challenge is is continuing to grow and right. maintain the expectations. 
Right. And I think that's where your your uh, executive director has made Absolutely. a huge impact. Absolutely. Is it because keeping consistency is one of the hardest things in the world to do right. in any business? Right. Well, I think most people will say that the, whether it was the old B'nai B'ris home or the Memphis Jewish home and now Memphis Jewish home and rehab, that we really have a reputation of excellent care. And we're like a family. And I think we all want to take care of our family, whether we're really related to them are they're just family that, um, you know, are friends or whatever. Um, I think there's a great deal of that. Um, I happen to know someone who has a family member here now, and he has become friends with the staff. He has become friends with all the other residents. And, um, you know, because he's out here every day. And that's very special. And, too, I think uh, that uh, having people just to listen to you know, a lot of them just let me talk. You don't have right. to say a word. Right. And right. Uh, because it is, uh, yeah, they're really interesting people if you stop and just start talking about them. Right. And, and, say, and there's so many activities. I mean, there is something to do. There are probably two or three things every day that people can, can, get, involved can get involved in. Absolutely. I would just come and sit and watch the birds or the fish. I'd be happy with that. Right, right. Well, but there's we have music, we have art therapy, there are there's a birth a monthly birthday party. There's bingo. Um, there are arts and crafts, painting. I mean, I think there are people who um, have all of a sudden realized that they have talents that they didn't know they had. And you know they become involved. Music. Um, well, I'm pretty. I'm pretty certain I've discovered all the talent I have. And you know, I, you never know. I'm pretty you sure. Never know. Pretty sure, JD. <laughs> well, <laughs> my friend, you know, my friend Ron Olson found out he could paint. Yeah. Late right, night. Right. Right. Uh, but I, I've tried that. I tried to paint by numbers when I was a kid. Right. And it, was, it was a no go. Well, but you know what? Sometimes <laughs> maybe it just takes somebody encouraging you to give it a try. It was probably the patience level then, which right. I had a great deal more of it at eight or nine than I do now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I'm sure if I were here, I would be getting involved with something great. Uh, and your advice to somebody if they're out there and they're looking for a place for either a parent or possibly themselves? Well, I would say head straight out to the Memphis Jewish Home and meet with people, see what it has to offer, look on the website, look, you know, um, absolutely. Judy Royal, thank you very much. And I appreciate your service out here. I know everybody else does, too. Thank you. Thank you for being involved for, for so long. You, you bet. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're coming to you from the Memphis Jewish Home and Rehab in Cordova, and we'll be back. <laughs> 